All right, let's look at this problem, inf TFA, which is the set of all DFAs as strings such that the language of that machine is infinite. So what we have to decide is the following question. So if we're given a DFA called M, is M written as a string in the language inf DFA? Is it in there? And basically what we have to ask about this DFA is, does it accept an infinite number of strings? Well, we know that if a DFA has infinite language, then there must be some kind of loop. So this tells us that there is a loop, uh, we should say if yes, so if the answer is yes, then there is a loop in M such that we can take that loop and still accept in the DFA. So what do I mean by this? So suppose we have our DFA right here. Then what we're saying is that there's some accept state over here somewhere and some state in the middle. It may be the start state. It may be a completely different state. But this tells us that there is some way to go to this state right here, some loop somewhere that eventually comes back to the same state, and then maybe at some point later, we will accept. But if you recall, this is actually reminiscent of the pumping lemma for regular languages. So how did we actually use the pumping lemma for regular languages here? Well, let's just say that there are n states in this DFA. Then what we can guarantee is that if we have a string of length at least n, then we will see a repetition because we always see one more state in a DFA than the length of the string itself. And that's pretty easy to see. So how is this gonna help us here? Well, we could, in principle, have a shorter string that doesn't visit every state in the machine. So maybe we have a situation like this. So let's say we have something like this, and then maybe there's some state over here that's just not visited. That's entirely possible. And we could have a shorter string that does a loop. But at some point, if we take that loop long enough, we must have a string of length at least the number of states because the number of states is finite. So what we're really asking here is, does M accept a string of length at least the number of states? Because if it does, it must have a repetition, which means it must have an infinite language. But what if it doesn't accept a string of length at least the number of states? So Let's just have a little thought bubble about this. So what if not? Because it, in principle, it could be that um, if this condition is not true, it still could have an infinite language. But we show that it's an if and only if in this case. So what if M accepts only strings of length at most the number of states, or strictly less. It doesn't really matter. So what does that even tell us here? I think I put an extra line there. So what if that is true? Well, that says that there's some upper limit on the lengths of the strings. Well, since the alphabet is finite, that means that there can only be a finite number of possible strings. So finite number of possible strings here because there's the alphabet is finite in uh, in number of characters allowed and the maximum possible length is a finite number so the total number of strings is finite so that means that l of m is finite the language of M is finite, if that condition is true. So we really do have an if and only if condition here. So if we can determine whether or not M accepts any string of length at least the number of states, then 
we can determine whether or not its language is infinite. So how can we do this here? Well, what we can do is something pretty clever, which you'll see in a sec. So let's make a decider. So on input m, where m is a DFA, what can we do? So let's let n be the number of states in M, just like what we said before. Then what I'm going to do is something a little special. I'm going to let M sub N be the DFA that accepts exactly the strings of length at least N. Okay, so it doesn't accept any string that is less than n, it accepts every single string of length at least n. So it's exactly the strings of length n. So how can we actually do that? Well, n could be an arbitrary number. Well, here's how we can do it. What we can do is have a bunch of transitions here, and then go eventually to an accept state, and the number of transitions here is n uh, before we get to the accept state. So the number of transitions to get to the accept state is n, and we put every single character on these transitions. So no matter what the characters are, I don't care. All I care about is the length of the string. So if you tell me what n is, like 100 or whatever, we can make this DFA easily. So why are we making this DFA in the first place? Why are we making m sub n? Well, let's see. Well, if m accepts a string of length at least n, then that means that there is something in common between the m sub n DFA and the m DFA. If m does not accept a string of length at least n, then there's nothing in common between them. So what we can do then is form a DFA, I'm going to call uh, I, which is L of I being the intersection of the original DFA and the one we just made. So here we're again using the product construction. So why are we doing this? Well, if there is something in common between these two, meaning that there is something in the language of I, then that tells us that M accepted a string of length at least N because there's something in common between these two. If language of I is empty, then there's nothing in common, which means L of M is uh, finite. So what can we do then? we could, again, appeal to the decider for emptiness for DFAs. So run the decider for EDFA on input I. So the DFA we just made. So then if it says yes, so it is empty, then we got to be careful. Let's think about this. If it says, yes, it is empty, there's nothing in common between M and M sub N, which means that the language of M is finite. Well, remember what question we're trying to ask. We're asking about infiniteness of a DFA. So if we said except here, that would mean that the language of M is infinite, which is not true. So I'm going to put this in blue to say to be to make this important. So we should actually say reject here. And if it says no, again I'll go to blue, we should say accept and we should be sure about that too. If it says no, it is not empty, then that means there is something in the intersection of these two DFAs, which means that M accepts a string of length at least N, which means that 
based on our reasoning before, that its language is infinite, which is the question we're trying to answer here. So we should say except there. And why is this a decider? Well, step five is definitely a decider. We're assuming that step four is a decider, and I'll eventually make a video on this. Uh, step three is a de uh, decidable because the product construction runs in a finite amount of time. The second step and the first step are both uh, decidable or can run in a finite amount of time because once I know the number of states, I could construct this DFA um, pretty easily in time O of n or something, but that's not important. The important thing is I can do it once I know the number of states. If I didn't know the number of states, there's no way I could do this. But once I know the number of states from step one, then I can easily do step two. So this whole thing runs in a finite amount of time. So this answers the question of whether, of how to actually check whether a DFA accepts an infinite language or not.